So we are going in parallel in terms of deriving a few equations, introducing some numerical methods, and then looking at ways to uh, reduce computational costs, increase accuracy, and so on. One thing we have done that you probably didn't think uh, much about is that we are computing all the quantities at i, j, and then i, j, n plus 1. So at, uh, you know, we are assuming a grid, we are computing values at the middle of the grid or at the uh, intersection of the grids um, and at the next time step. But if you think physically, when you talk about flux coming in, flux going out, uh, they are typically at the ends, right? If you have a grid box, flux has to come in at the end. So where do you compute things like a temperature and a term like u times t or u times dt dx and so on and so forth. So this kind of physical considerations also matter uh, and that leads to different types of grids in climate models uh, which again affect accuracy, computational cost and of course the uh, representation, uh, physical representation of the uh, volume quantities, so average of the grid box is the temperature, but the flux is not the average, right? So those kind of details matter. So let's go back to our uh, uh, shallow water equation, du dt equal to minus g d a to dx. We were just uh, relating uh, pressure gradient, which is the sea level gradient in our shallow water system, to uh, the acceleration term and the uh, Sea level variability itself in time is related to the uh, average depth of the water column and the divergence. So in, in this case, uh, we are still dealing with no vertical shear in U and V. So when you have divergence or convergence, it directly translates to uh, sea level change. Um, so if you uh, take this into one dimension, uh, let's see, what are we doing here? So uh, du dt equal to minus g uh, d eta dx and d eta dt is, let me make sure I forgot the assumption we made uh, into this jump here. Um, so we're just going into one dimension here, okay, that's all. Uh, yeah, so we are going for uh, zonal uh, velocity and sea level. So we have dropped delta y for now. Uh, so ui is equivalent to u at i delta x at any uh, point uh, at time t and eta i is also at eta i delta x at t. So we are computing u and eta at the same uh, point in x and we are writing uh, the discretization as dui dt d eta i dt as simple uh, uh, estimates of minus g eta i plus 1 minus eta uh, i minus 1 or 2 delta x. Uh, so that's writing d eta dx in uh, uh, second order differential equations, second order accuracy. And the eta i dt is written again as a central difference uh, because that's du dx, okay? So again, second order difference. But in reality, what happens? Uh, you are uh, basically decoupling u and eta. So if you look at how you computed eta at 2k and u at 2k plus 1 and look at eta at 2k plus 1 and u at 2k, uh, they are basically going to uh, mutually become mutually independent and not exchange any information. Okay, so that's the staggering you get because of doing these separately and computing for uh, you know, dui dt and d eta i dt with the similar differences in space and looking for uh, the solution. There's a chopper going by, so I stop for a second.
Okay, so uh, let's uh, look at this in the figure, it becomes more obvious. So the simple grid for shallow water equations, all functions are evaluated at the same points. Two independent subgrids connected with the red and blue lines result. So you have delta x and you have uh, eta i minus 2, eta i minus 1 and eta i, eta i plus 1, eta i plus 2 and you are computing the u also at the same point so u i minus 2, u i minus 1, u i, u i plus 1 and so on but when you evaluate the re these discretizations you are basically uh, zigzagging for uh, the quantities uh, in this way so you have basically no information exchange uh, between these grid points that we talked about eta 2k and u 2k plus 1 and uh, eta 2k plus 1 and u 2k uh, <clears throat> so this is the uh, you know you picked a good accurate uh, representation but you created this uh, situation on the other hand if you create a staggered grid for shallow water equations uh, then the flux quantities and volume quantity so u is advecting uh, water parcel so it's a uh, flux uh, quantity and eta is the average over that grid box so we call it the volume quantity and this way you are now having a similarly ui minus 1 ui ui plus 1 and eta i eta i plus 1 and eta i plus 2 so you have increased the uh, uh, grid spacing to 2 delta x between ui and ui plus 1 and you created a staggered grid by putting uh, eta i also at 2 delta x but you stagger it by 1 so then you compute du dx at uh, i minus a half so instead of going at, uh, from i minus 1 to i you compute du dx at i minus a half and you compute d eta x d eta dx at i plus a half okay so this reduces the number of computations because you are only computing half the grid points and you are avoiding this uh, disconnection between neighboring grid points okay so now you can write this again as dui dt equal minus g a d eta dx at i plus a half equal to minus g eta i plus one minus eta i over two delta x eta i uh, d eta i dt is minus h du dx at i minus a half and that is approximated as minus h ui minus ui minus one or two delta x the accuracy remains the same because you have uh, increased the uh, delta x to 2 delta x so the accuracy doesn't change but the computational cost goes down quite a bit so this kind of physical uh, ideas and uh, removing numerical uh, modes of disconnecting the different quantities uh, uh, leads us to multiple uh, concepts of uh, how to organize the grids so here we have two dimensions two-dimensional Arakawa A grid in which all functions are evaluated at identical grid points so you can see at the intersection we have U V and eta for all grid points even though we have volume quantity eta averaged over the grid box and flux quantities should be coming in here and here right so this is uh, leads to unphysical things as well as more computation for similar accuracy whereas in the two-dimensional Arakawa E grid now you are taking uh, eta at the intersection uh, and UV at a different point so you have staggered them now with eta at 2 delta X and U and V at 2 delta X and 2 delta Y as well so this is similar to the one-dimensional staggered grid that uh, we talked about except that now it is done in uh, two dimensions and this gives you also better representation of the fluxes versus uh, volume quantities two-dimensional Arakawa C grid in which flux quantities of different directions are evaluated at different points so now you have staggered not only uh, u in x but you have staggered v also in uh, x and y so you are now arranging so u v and are not be are not u and v are not being computed at the same grid point so you are computing u here and v here okay so you can see that uh, u is in the y direction here 
v in the x direction here. Okay, so while volume quanti quantities are computed in between, so you have uh, eta, eta, and u, eta, eta, and v, and so on and so forth. The volume quantities are located in the centers of the dashed boxes, uh, while flux quantities u and v are centered on the box boundaries. Okay, so you can think of this as uh, 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 okay. So this is our grid. Volume quantity is in the middle. U is on the uh, interface here and V is on the interface here. Similarly, eta is in the middle here, V at in this interface and U at this interface, which is physically much more easier to compute the flux of eta uh, because of U and V. Okay, So therefore the C grid accounts for mass balance in a natural way. Setting boundary conditions also becomes <coughs> easier when you pick the appropriate grid. There are lots of details of uh, carrying uh, these complex grids and computing accuracies and convergences and CFL criteria and so on. So we are not getting into all those. We are just getting introduced to the different grids and uh, hopefully that's not getting lost in the way I'm recording this. So <clears throat> going back to our uh, radiation balance equation, we had uh, average thickness h, uh, density, heat capacity, time ch uh, temperature change in time uh, with the diffusion term which is a second order d squared t d phi square, square term, uh, the radiation distribution in uh, latitude with latitudinally dependent albedo and the outgoing long wave radiation with emissivity that's also latitudinally dependent. <coughs> sorry we can write that as dt dt uh, just take this on this side and write as a constant plus b t to the fourth uh, and c times uh, the uh, diffusion term obviously we represented here as uh, uh, radiation term a um, if an a grid is selected uh, in the uh, figure that we looked at the discretized form of this equation then uh, becomes uh, del ti del t equal to a i plus b i t i to the fourth plus c i times e i plus one uh, times t prime i plus one minus e i minus one times t prime i minus one divided by two delta phi. So just remember that when you stagger the grids typically you end up with twice the grid size here. So T prime here is basically T pl I plus 1 minus T I minus 1 or 2 delta phi. So here 2 T K and T prime 2 K plus 1. So the derivative and the quantity in the um, at the grid point and T times 2 K plus 1 and T prime 2 K are uh, independent solution vectors. The solution is evaluated on two non-connected subgrids. So as you keep on writing these expressions uh, just following the technique then this is the numerical uh, situation that arises. So for the A grid again we have what we had before so T i minus uh, 2 T prime which is the derivative so eventually you're going to uh, disconnect the two so you are computing these things almost independently whereas if you picked a C grid for the one dimensional energy balance model, the same equation, then you uh, stagger them so you compute T prime I minus 1, T I here, T prime I here instead of here as you do here and T I plus 1 here. So you have increased the grid spacing, reduced the number of uh, <coughs> points at which derivatives are being computed and so on. So in a C grid configuration uh, with double grid spacing only half the number of functions uh, has to be evaluated and accordingly the discretized form reads DTI DT so looks similar but here uh, you have T prime I computed as TI plus 1 minus TI divided by 2 delta phi which is different than what we had done here the accuracy remains the same. You don't change the accuracy. So which is of the same accuracy but requires only half the computational resources. In addition, the implementation of boundary conditions with respect to the flux quantities 
uh, you know, normal derivative at the boundary for heat uh, becomes zero, so you don't have heat coming in or going out, for example, <coughs> then the derivative t prime can be set to zero and uh, at uh, the left boundary and t prime m can be set to zero at the right boundary naturally. So <coughs> you get <coughs> a better physical representation, similar accuracy, and you reduce the computational cost. This is the beauty of using appropriately staggered grids. Okay, I hope it's clear. Just make sure you get the concept that physically also fluxes are at a different place than the volume averaged quantities, uh, and numerically also representing them in a staggered grid reduces the computational cost keeps the accuracy to be the same and avoids this decoupling of grid points uh, because of the numerical representation of all quantities at the same grid point. Okay.